What's up guys, Alan Wade back again with another video and today we're going to be embroidering on some Nike performance fleece material. I am ex a little bit experienced with these so I'm just going to go with my standard 7511 needle. Um, you might want to consider using a ballpoint needle for these shirts because they do have little tiny holes. Um, so yeah, you might want to, you got to experiment. Get, I advise you guys to get a used one or use one, an old one and experiment with them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some spray adhesive, I'm gonna use some cutaway stabilizer, I'm gonna use two pieces of cutaway stabilizer and some spray adhesive, my Mighty Hoop Hoop Master Station and my five by five hoop because it's going in the left chest, guys. All right, and these are Nike Performance. These things are $52 each, all right? So you can't mess this up. I already took my design that's going on left chest. It's a little small, tiny design right here. And it's going on the left chest and I'm just gonna hoop them up and get them done I already checked for placement and everything and everything seems to be fine everything looks fine got my hoop master station ready to go so I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the shirts inside out I'm gonna spray the spray adhesive on the back of my cutaway stabilizer and then I'm going to go ahead and place it on there then I'm gonna hoop it up show you guys right now let's, let's Let's go. So as you guys can see, I'm just gonna grab a nice, healthy piece of stabilizer because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this and mount it to the back of my shirt first. I'll show you guys, there's a method to my madness too. So I'm gonna measure, I'm doing four. So I'm gonna cut out four pieces of stabilizer. And like I said, this is a cutaway stabilizer, not tearaway stabilizer. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this method I found is the best way for me to have um, low to absolutely no puckering on this type of material and that's exactly what you want right low to no puckering I'm actually also not going to use just this but I'm also going to mount another piece of stabilizer so I'm going to use two pieces one that has temporary adhesive spray to it and one that does not have temporary adhesive spray to it and then I'm going to use my hoop master station and hoop this stuff up like I said, just because these, these, these shirts are expensive. These shirts are expensive, so I don't want to mess them up. So right now I'm cutting out eight pieces of stabilizer right here. Spray adhesive on one, no spray adhesive on the other. All right, I think I'm at six or something like that. All right, and after that, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So now that I have all of my pieces of stabilizer cut to the size that I want them to be, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my fleece inside out because I'm gonna go ahead and spray the adhesive on my cutaway stabilizer and mount them to the back of this. And the reason why I'm doing that is like I said, to give it some extra, extra, extra um, stabilization, right? So that when it's embroidering out, it doesn't move at all because this performance fleece will pucker on you and it will look like crap. So in order to avoid that, I highly, highly recommend that you guys use um, the temporary spray adhesive along with some cutaway stabilizer. All right, very, very important because people are gonna wanna get this stuff done. And um, performance fleece is very, like something that people get embroidered on often. Um, I'm doing this for some football coaches and one day turn around. Literally got called this morning and asked if I could do it. And I said, yeah, drop them off to me and I'll get them done for you, all right? So I'm knocking this out same day. And that's one of the luxuries of being a small business. You can go ahead and do stuff like this for people same day, all right? So let me show you guys how I do this. So here's my first one right here and I'm just gonna lay it down flat and I'm gonna make sure that I'm mounting my stabilizer on the opposite part where the logo is not. So I'm just gonna look inside real fast. It goes on the left chest. So our Nike logo is on this side right here. So we're gonna mount our spray adhesive on this side right here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this down nice and flat. You don't want any wrinkles at all in it. I'm gonna grab my stabilizer. And this is even a little bit too big. So I'm gonna cut it to about right here and right where the I want it to adhere to. All right, so let me just, I'm not even gonna measure it or anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and rough cut it. Just give it a rough cut right here. 
Make sure if you're doing what I do, you don't cut the actual shirt. <laughs> All right, like that. And I'm gonna cut this part right here down. And what I advise you guys to do is when you're using this fabric right here or this, this, this uh, spray adhesive, go ahead and get yourself something like uh, um, a piece of cloth to spray it on right here. I don't have one. I'm just gonna go ahead and spray on the adhesive thing itself and just go ahead and do it. All right, so shake this up right here. All right, that's good. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's nice and flat, like I said, and go ahead and mount this right in this area right here where I'm gonna be embroidering on. Make sure all the fabric is fat, flat. Make sure you're not stretching the fabric at all. All right, and right at the edge right here, right onto the garment. That's cool. Don't, you don't wanna spray onto the garment. You actually wanna spray onto the actual stabilizer. That's what I'm gonna do for the following, for the next couple shirts. Um, but yeah, just to show you guys, all right? So here we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, hoop this up with my hoop master station. So I got my hoop master station right here. I'm just gonna grab a piece of my stabilizer. Actually, I'm gonna grab my hoop first. And I've already went ahead and I'm, I'm, I've already um, put this in the correct place that I want it to be on the, on the sweatshirt. I mean on the performance shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here right like that. All right, so this is my first piece of stabilizer right here. Like I said, it's gonna be double. And this is my second piece of stabilizer right here. So I'm gonna carefully turn this inside out and make sure this does not move. I mean right side in and make sure it doesn't move. And what I do, how I do that is I go ahead and reach, reach my hand in it and I hold it and I go ahead and flip it. And it all the time stays into place. And now you can see I have a few wrinkles. I'm just going to straighten that out. So you got these little wrinkles and bubbles right here where the stabilizer spray adhesive is. You're just going to straighten that out right there. All right, straighten it out. But when you straighten it out, make sure you are not stretching the fabric. That's the key part, guys. Do not stretch the fabric when you straighten this out. All right, don't stretch the fabric. All right, you do not want the fabric to stretch. All right, so boom, I straighten that out. And now I'm going to go ahead and get my hoop master station, my hoop master dressed. That's what I call it, getting it dressed. What I like about the hoop master station is you got these little holes right here, right? You got these little holes right here. It says two. I'm going to drop it down two numbers, all right? So if I pull this out right here, pull it out, it's got these little dot, these little points right here on it, right? So I had it on two. I'm gonna drop it down to, there's six, and then there's 10. Drop it down to 10, push it back in, and get everything back straight again, because I just moved it. And now, this is the actual point where I wanna put my shirt in and where I think it's gonna be right across from the Nike logo. So let's go ahead and get the Hoop Master Station dressed now. All right, go ahead and place your shirt over top of Hoopmaster Station. Be careful not to pull off your stabilizer that you mounted on it with the temporary spray adhesive. All right, got that coming down. All right, see how it's nice and flowy. It's not stretched or anything. And check for placement. Check to make sure it's straight, All right? And now I like the way it's placed. See how the Nike logo is right there? It's supposed to fall right in this area. And I'm look, feeling for my hoop. It's right here. And I know the middle is going to be right here, right across from the Nike logo. And that's exactly where I want it. So now I go ahead and take my Hoop Master Station, my, my Mighty Hoop, and I just go ahead and drop it in. Now, I could do several things. I could mount it upside down which is what I'm most likely gonna do. And on the machine, I'm gonna have to flip my design upside down so I can embroider the correct way. Um, that's most likely what I'm gonna do. So let me just go ahead and hoop it up. There it is, we're hooped up. I don't like the way it's hooped, guys, to be honest. So I'm gonna take it off again and re-hoop it because it seems like the fabric is a little loose in my, um, yeah, I don't like the way it's hooped. So let me do that one more time. All right. Actually, you know what? Actually, it's perfect. 
It's fine. It's perfect. I'm just being picky. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Just being picky. So let me go ahead and put this in the machine, and we'll go ahead and embroider this one out. The Mighty Hoop is, most instances, it, you always get it perfect. So let's hoop it up and embroider the first one. So we're putting it on MT right here. Use my Racoma affiliate link if you want to purchase MT1501. Go ahead and feed the inside. Open up your shirt, feed the inside through here, and place this in your system right here. And let's not forget, it is upside down, so we have to go ahead and flip our design upside down. Right now, I'm reaching inside of the hoop to make sure that nothing is going to embroider on top of anything. And on the screen of my MT-1501, I'm going to flip the design. All right, got to flip the design. Don't forget about that. Important step. All right, so you see the screen on the MT. I hope it's not too glary. So I got my logo right here. Like I said, the neck logo, the neck part is this way right here because I hooped it backwards, right? So I'm going to flip this design. So I'm going to go right here to design set. Wait, first I got to unlock my machine. Go to design set. I'm going to hit this F right here because that indicates which way your embroidery design is facing. It's facing normally. So we're going to flip it 180 degrees right there. This regular, this flipped 180. Press OK. And it flipped our design upside down because our neck is right here and our body is right here. So we want it upside down, all right? So you exit out of that, lock it, and we are ready to embroider. Already picked our colors, orange and, uh, and white. So we are ready to embroider. All we got to do is press start. All right, guys, you ready? Going to start this up. We got our um, machine set to 800 stitches per minute. We're just going to go for it right now. All right. Here we go. All right, see how it's embroidering nice and smooth right there? It's not pulling on the material because we have that stabilizer on there. If we didn't have a stabilizer on there, it would give a lot more pull than that. But hopefully by the time this is done embroidering, we won't have any pull at all. All right, and it'll look like it's just laying on there. Another way to do this is to just embroider it out and make patches and then sew it on. But, you know, it's nothing like a good old full embroidered on patch or logo or design or whatever you want to call it. All right. So, like I said, if you're in a market to purchase an embroidery machine, make sure you use my Racoma affiliate link down in the description below to purchase yours today. Got some good deals going on, guys. And once you get your attention, situated the machine is a beast and it get th gets things done right for you so right here we are wrapping up with the main part of the design and the thing that you want to pay attention to is the fact that when you use stabilizer like this and you use a spray adhesive you get no um, loss of registration so right now it's going to switch to the other thread right here and because of the stabilizer we used, everything is going to be right in the exact position that it, that it is supposed to be with no loss of registration. That's why I love using this type method right here with the, um, with the spray adhesive and your cutaway stabilizer because this is the way that you can ensure that your design comes out great. You got no puckering, you got no gaps, you got no loss of registration. So that's the tip of the day, guys. If you're doing performance, if you're doing performance wear, make sure you guys are using a uh, cutaway stabilizer with your spray adhesive. And I showed you guys this method with the Brother SE600, and I'm continuing the same thing with our multi-needle machines. That's why it's really valuable to start off with a single head, but if your budget permits, then go ahead and buy yourself a multi-head and just start off with your full-fledged business because you know when you start off with a single with a single needle then I mean you can't do nearly as much as you can with a multi-needle so it's worth it if you have the budget to start off with that multi-needle so you can um, just go ahead and start your business but if your budget does not permit like I said you can go ahead and get a single needle more affordable do what you can do with it and then scale your way up to that multi-needle machine and then you'll be in business and the crazy thing is once you scale your way up to that multi-needle, you're going to need more than one multi-needle. And I know it seems like, gosh, a multi-needle is already expensive as it is. How am I going to be able to afford two of them? But trust me, once that business starts to roll in, 
these multi-needle machines and that high price tag is gonna be nothing, all right? Yeah, you see it, stop playing. And just like that, guys, clean, neat, and finished. All right, let's take this off so we can have a look at them. Yeah, look at that, nice. All right, the moment of truth, guys. You see it, it looks really, really good on here, but the moment of truth is when you unhoop it, if it ravels in, then you know you did a bad job. If it stays how it is, then you know you did a good job. So let's see what we got. Oh, unhooped and looking clean and pristine. Now all we gotta do is flip it around, do our trims, and look at that. Look at that, nice. That's what we want, that's what we want right there, all right? I'm gonna trim it up, and then I'm gonna have you guys take another look at it again, guys. That's what I'm talking about, success. All right, this is what my trim looks like. Could go ahead and take it in a little bit more, but I'm gonna leave it just like this. That's fine for me, all right? You could be anal and go in. It's really not necessary. Maybe you can go in a little bit right here, but at this point, you're close to the garment, so you gotta be very, very careful. You don't accidentally cut the garment, all right? You don't wanna do that, so that's good enough for me, all right? That's good enough for me. So let's flip it around again and take a look at it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. That's pretty much as good as it's gonna get right there, all right? Look at that, all right? No real puckering right there. Doing something a little bit weird up here, maybe some slight type of puckering. That's just the thread sinking in there. But overall, like, I mean, I mean, guys, that's pretty flat, pretty good. Let me know what you guys, a little bit, little tiny bit of pulling right there. That, that's, I'm being picky right now. This is pretty much as good as it's going to get, guys. Um, you're not going to get much better than that when you're doing performance gear. Um, yeah, the main takeaway, guys, is that when you're doing stuff, the one thing that you want to ensure that you do before you take on any job is to practice. Practice the method that you're going to use. Practice on the material that you think that you might get. You know, you don't want to take an embroidery job if you're not familiar with embroidering on that specific type of material. Um, you don't want to mess up somebody's expensive garment. You don't want to put yourself in a predicament where, uh, where you know, your, your business is out there and, and you're, you're messing up your name, all right? Right? And so, in some cases, you could put yourself in a situation where you've actually lost money if you are embroidering on something and you mess up somebody's expensive garment. Like I'm showing you, this, these things right here are $52 each. My client might, might have gotten them on sale. I don't know. But... It's all I know is that price tag right there says $52 and guess what? I ain't trying to pay no $52 back and have to replace these garments. So that's how important it is to go ahead to the thrift store. I don't care where you go. Go ahead and get yourself some practice fabric and practice embroidering on all these different types of fabrics so that when it's your time to get a job similar to this, you know exactly what it is that you are doing. All right. So. Let's go use my Recoma affiliate link down description down below to purchase your machine and start making that money, baby. It's your boy, Alan Wade. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. While I listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby.